Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna really quickly make sure that it looks good and everything's going good. I've got my chat out. All right, good to go. Welcome to Deep Learning, Kaggle Kernels, GPU, part two, um, where there's gonna be even more struggling, I imagine. Uh, I hope a lot of people who have a lot of experience with Keras tune in today so they can help me with my, undoubtedly, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of issues. Uh, so one question I get, sometimes, not super, super often, is um, I was working on a kernel and then I left it. Where is it? So your kernels live in your profile. So this is my Kaggle profile. You can tell that I am very incognito. Uh, no one could tell that this is Rachel's account. Um, if you're wondering why my username is weird, it's because of that. And in your in your account, which is just kaggle.com slash whatever your, your username is, um, you have some tabs here and under the kernels tab, you can see all of your kernels. Um, and as you can see, most of mine are private because it's just me like messing around. Um, and a couple of them are open, like this one we did uh, last week with the ethics exploration. And, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of uh, unresponsiveness. Well, this bodes well. Uh, hopefully, oh, I figured out what's happening. I accidentally opened OBS twice. Oh, please go away without crashing my first one. Okay, well, hopefully you guys can hear me and everything goes good and this window just closes and it's very polite and nothing bad happens. Um, something went wrong. Well, this is going great. This is going amazing so far. Uh, mm. Nope, something did go wrong. Something's up. Okay. Noted. That's not ideal. <laughs> um, uh, hmm. Well... I guess I'm just gonna click on it again and see if it works this time. Okay, no, it definitely doesn't work. Um, mm, wow. So we did some work uh, last time getting everything set up and it looks like um, we have run into some technical difficulties. Uh, so let's try this one. I don't know what's in here. Let's find out. I'm pretty sure it's not this one with the FIFA World Cup. I'm pretty sure I was just testing something for somebody. And I don't know what this private data set one is either. Um, we may have to start over from scratch. Uh, okay, well, at least this is loading and I'm not getting an error message. And hopefully also you guys can see me. <laughs> uh, 10 out of 10. Uh really professional stream today. I was expecting to have code issues, not uh, this sort of thing. So that's loading. Uh, so if you remember, the sort of thing that we wanted to do this project on was I wanted to take an emoji string and predict what the next emoji would be uh, to build this sort of like um, uh, model of, you know, multi emoji strings. Uh, and I was poking around a little bit and there's this nice, I say nice, uh, there exists this uh, Keras example of uh, text generation with LSTMs uh, that is uh, hopefully a minimal working example. Uh, so this is to generate new Nisha tasks, texts, uh, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I don't know, presumably somebody enjoys reading Nisha. And... Uh, I was thinking we could take uh, this and then um, use some of uh, Dan's code. Um, so you can see, if you remember, mm, mm, so it hasn't been compiled. It doesn't have a title. I'm just going to check work chat really quick and make sure no one's uh, talking about anything that would be relevant to this. 
Okay, it looks like not. Um, okay, so this is a BigQuery notebook. I remember writing this. I was testing something for somebody. Um, so that's not it. So I think we're going to have to pretty much start again is what this is, uh, what this is looking like to me. So yeah, actually, I thought we can find somebody doing LSTM text generation. Hey, oh, look, Meg wrote something. Uh, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> So I'm just going to start by forking a new project and starting again, and I will uh, get to the bottom of the mysterious disappearing notebook. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have deleted it, would I have? Maybe I deleted it accidentally. Uh, well, we'll go back and see if we can uh, figure that out at some point in the future when I'm not trying to show you guys stuff. Okay, so, uh, TensorFlow Keras? Python NumPy? Keras? I don't want to build from TensorFlow. Uh, Keras, okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I, I could, but man, do I not want to. Okay, uh, so we can use this as our template, and I'm actually going to start by uh, deleting a bunch of this stuff. Oh, actually, the first thing I want to do is check and make sure that the GPUs are enabled. They are. Everything looks good there. And I'm going to go and turn off that fan. I will be right back. And I'm back. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it on the monitor and it drives me nuts. Uh, and we can probably get rid of all of this like data exploration thing because uh, it's not going to be relevant to the data set that we're going to import. Uh, that's not going to be relevant. Goodbye. 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 Uh, and then there is some um, uh, additional preparation code. I'm going to keep that, but I'm not going to use it. Probably I'm going to end up modifying it. Uh, and here we've got some data augmentation. Uh, and so taking our, our input text and putting it in the correct format for training an LSTM. And I imagine she's going to do one hot encoding. Sparse Boolean tensors. Yeah. And this is the um, model design compiling with the loss function and the optimizer, uh, root mean square proportion. And then uh, a lot of times with LSTM text generation, people will do a little bit of uh, um, as you're running it, you'll sort of like spit out some sample text and you can see sort of as it goes through the baking process in the uh, metaphor where it's a cake. I don't know, people talk about their models being underbaked, you know. Uh, and then making, fitting the model. So here we compile it. There's some handy functions we're going to use. And then we fit the model to our data uh, and give ourselves some examples. Okay, so that seems good. And we're going to have to do less futzing about with this. So I think in the long run, this is going to be a time saver, but I do want to figure out why exactly uh, my other kernel disappeared. That shouldn't happen. Uh, and I'm going to remove this. And instead, I'm going to add a data source. And I believe the... Oh, okay, yeah, it's running. Uh, and I believe the... The uh, kernel that I want to use is the um, emoji analysis kernel. Did you actually? Oh, there we go. Uh, so it's a kernel, and I want emoji <laughs> emoji analysis analysis with no w. And this is going to take a minute to search. Uh, and then we can add that. And I remember us uh, 
Yes, that's the very one. Uh, and I remember us, yes, exactly, having a CSV output uh, with all of our emoji in it. So we can just read this in, take the ones of length more than one, and uh, uh, use that as our training data. And I believe last time we figured out that um, you don't have to modify the length of the training data. It can be up to X rather than uh, exactly X. So we should be able to use a lot of this um, without a bunch of, um, whatchamacallit, well, a whole bunch of finagling. Uh, and we can just drop all the ones that are of length one, because obviously one emoji is not a sequence. Uh, and we've also removed modifiers. So uh, I think I mentioned last time, so like this this hand clap uh, with the dark skin tone emoji is actually two characters. So it's the hand clapping emoji character and then it's the modifier uh, that says dark skin tone. So it's a character and then it's modified. Uh, and uh, depending on how uh, the Unicode support is, we may up, end up wanting to um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, remove all of the modifiers. So that's why this is. This is why these are all yellow, because that's the default color. Um, but I don't know. I think it's worthwhile to include the modifiers because there's clearly something going on here, right? There's not uh, a bunch of the same colored hands next to each other. We're sort of moving throughout the color spectrum. And that happens a lot, it looks like, with sort of these hand uh, emoji. So we may want to keep that. Uh, and that might give us some sort of interesting, uh, interesting outputs. Interesting, it looks like when there's multiple hand gestures, we have the same skin tone, but when there's just one hand gesture, we have a bunch of different skin tones, or it is possible to have a bunch of different skin tones together. Uh, which I think tells us something interesting about whether we have a distributed reading or a sort of like a repetitive reading um, with emojis. So if I do five clapping hands, do I mean five people clapping or one person clapping five times? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so we have our data in, uh, and we are going to want to run all of this. This is all of our configuration stuff. Uh, this is not going to work. We need the emo emoji. Uh, she's only reading in two columns. I think I want to read in the whole thing. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Goodbye. Boop. And the Twitter emoji CSV is what we want. Uh, and we don't care about bots in this data. Also, we don't have that recorded. Um, let's see, just take a little peeky-poo. All right, that looks good to me. Awesome. Uh, and one thing that Megan has done, sorry, Meg has done that I'm not here fan of is uh, doing ports uh, imports inline and I'm one of those people who likes to do all my imports first thing um, and that's just my personal preference so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna move all of my imports up to the top I guess that's it's just like a style thing like it doesn't matter uh, it's just like the way that I like to do it um, all right, Banana Freak to you says, are the letters in some of the cells display issues or bad data? So those are, sorry, one sec, let me get all of my libraries back uh, and then I will answer your question. Uh, they gone, they are gone. Um, <laughs> Let me just get those back. I have pasted bad. Um, they are flags, uh, country flags. So they are rendered. They're they're rendered incorrectly here. But uh, so this is the flag of Zambia, the flag of CF. Uh, RW is probably Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria. Cote d'Ivoire, probably Mali, probably Mali, right? Uh, probably Tanzania. 
and then CF, whatever that is. Um, so these are uh, actually, if you try to like select them, you can see that these two characters, quote unquote, are actually um, one character, one Unicode character, one uh, emoji. Uh, and here I have removed all the modifiers. So the, the fact that the um, flags look different is because because they're different letters because it's the base flag emoji and then a modifier. Uh, and in this one, I've removed all of them and I've made them all A, uh, just to make them easier to count. So this is six different flags. Uh, this is seven, eight, eight different flags. Um, and instead of being spelled out, they're all just a letter A and that means a flag. Uh, but I'm probably gonna use the this version. For example, this is French flag, French flag, French flag, and this is just, there are three flags here. Yeah, that's a good question. That's just some pre-processing that I did. All right, <laughs> let's go get these libraries that I just deleted. <laughs> My inability to copy and paste. Copy. Paste, okay. And now we have all of our imports. Uh, we have our GPU device. Everything is good. Uh, we've got our data right in. All right. So. We don't have the original data anymore. Let's see. So I'm trying to see what uh, what these objects that she's making here, what these variables get used for later on. Uh, okay. So we do the length of unique characters what is user here user is subset the data and collapse the vector of strings into a single string oh okay so um we are taking all of the text and whoop, uh squishing it into one long string uh, doing two lower, that doesn't matter because emoji don't have case. Uh, oh, oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there is a dog somewhere and they are not happy. Something's happening and they want me to know about it. Uh, and then only using 20% of the data. We'll probably use all the data because we've got less data and they're shorter strings. Um... Okay, so this is taking 20% of the data. We don't need that. Uh, we're looking at only one user's text. So, so this is the number of number of lines, basically. Uh, and then this is joining all the lines together. So this is this is this is not the number of unique characters. This is the total number of characters in the string. I think we don't want to do this. Um, I think what we want to do first is we want to remove the columns where the uh, length is one. I think we only want columns with a, an emoji length of one or more. Uh, sorry, more than one, because obviously one emoji is not a sequence. Um, and maybe instead of doing this space, we can do a line end character uh, or some sort of character to represent the end of a tweet. Um, Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how I want to go about this. Uh, but first, we definitely do want to want to remove these uh, things of length one. So, um, remove, remove rows with an emoji sequence. 
sequence sequence it looks all right of len one um can i do emoji lang in l e n t t h Meh? Is that gonna work? Uh, definitely won't work without a period, huh? Uh, oof, okay. Um, what if I put it in quotes so you know it's a name? Not supported. Oh, okay. It doesn't. It still doesn't know it's a name. Um. Oh, actually, I think what we can do is we can probably do emoji dot length. Mm. Greater than one? Hey, it worked. Uh, I know pandas. I don't know pandas very well. Listen, I like R. Uh, and we get rid of that. Okay, so now we should have only emoji with a length greater than one. And we're good to go there. Does it have to be in the same sequence? Uh... Actually, let's see how many rows we have. Uh, is, 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 dim, is dim a thing? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. What? Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. So we've got uh, 4,000 rows, which is, as they say, not that many rows. <laughs> um, but also we don't have as many unique characters. Um, so if we just do set emoji dot emoji, I think this will tell us how many unique characters we have. Um, does that seem right to you guys? Is this an object I can do head on? It is not, okay. Uh, what if I take a slice? I want the first six. Okay, also can't do that. Um, what if I just print it? Okay, also that's not what I <laughs> I wanted the unique characters. I know we did this last week and I've just immediately forgotten how to do it. And I think we have like 700 plus unique characters. So not that many. Uh, considering that these would be the equivalent of words in, in a corpus. Uh, and a corpus of 7,000 words is just just not that many words, um, unique words. Um, okay, so, and it looks like we have a lot of repeated utterances as well. Um, it's sort of what that was telling us comparing, so the fact that, uh, there we go. So the fact that we only have 220, 2,264 uh, unique utterances because a set takes all of the unique items, but we have 4,713 total utterances. Sorry, I keep saying utterances. I mean emoji strings. Um, so we have quite a bit of repetition. Uh, so I don't know that getting more data would actually be super duper helpful. I mean, always more data is helpful. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Uh, do we want to do this? What if we don't? What if we just don't do this right now? Eh? Uh, do we need it for anything further down? Uh, Format the corpus into an array of semi-overlapping sequences of uniform length and next characters. Um... Hmm. I think we do want to do this. I think we want a max length of two. I think we want a max length of two and a step of one. Um, so this is going to take a little like, so if we had like, this would give us AS and then SD and then DF and then FA and then AS. Um, so that would be that we're looking at two characters at a time and then we slip over one and then we look at two characters and we slip over one and then we look at two characters and we slip over one 
And I think that's okay for this, this sequence because there are longer strings, but the longer streams tend to have a lot of repetition. So I think we should be okay doing it this way. Uh, and if we are doing it this way, we, yeah, we do want to do all this nonsense. Um, yeah, except we don't want to call it user. I think we can just, uh, just call this emojis equals emoji dot emoji. Uh, and then whenever we see emoji user, we're going to instead use emojis. So let's see if that works here. Yeah. Okay. That looks right. So we have, uh, 4,713 uh, messages. So if you remember, that's the number of rows we have in our, in our data frame, now that we've removed all of the spans of length one, uh, and the message adds up to 22,000 characters. That's a fair number of emoji. And some of the strings are fairly long, but the very long strings also have a lot of repetition. Okay. Uh, and I believe there's a find and replace feature. Let's see. So I've hit escape to do edit mode. And then if I do F, I can just do find and replace. And then wherever we have user, we are instead going to say emojis. Whoa, not like that or not. <laughs> nope. Emojis. All right. And replace all. And it didn't work. Does it only work within the same cell? Uh, so I'm hitting escape and then F user and then emojis oh it only works within a cell bah, bah, bah. okay that's not too bad uh oh sample size isn't defined oh did we just delete that we might might not should have uh, let's find sample size uh it would be up from here uh if you were finding the model blah blah blah, blah series Oh, right, right, right. Um, so sample size here is the number of utterances and we can instead of sample size, oh, we don't need this because we're not subsampling. We're just using all of them, right? Uh, awesome. So there is our one long string with all of the emojis. Um, and are they showing up twice? No, it looks like we just have the same string twice, which we know because when we looked at the set, we had fewer of them. So this is not super unsurprising. All right. Uh, and now we're going to do our little overlap thing and escape and then F and find user and replace with emojis. And it only happened once, but that should be fine. Uh, and we have 649 characters, unique characters, um, now that we've gotten rid of all the emoji that are only used once by themselves. And I think that sounds about right. I think that's what we got last week as well. And we already set the max length and the steps. Escape F and user. I'm going to replace that with emojis. Do that everywhere. Uh, and here are our, that's a problem. No, it's not a problem. Okay, so these are our sentences. Um, and this space just means end of line. Uh, you know what? STM line breaks character. I think we might could use like slash n. New line character. Blah, 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 blah. Well, this seems like fine tuning and we can just do that later. Okay. Um, and now we're going to change it to a sparse Boolean, uh, tensor and a tensor is just a matrix with another dimension. Uh, and if you remember matrices, they should be numbers. And I think we should be good to go here. And let's look, just look at X. Awesome. So this is the sort of the first layer of the 
um, tensor, and one of these should be true. Unless this is an empty, oh, here he goes. Um, so this is sort of a layer that tells us whether or not we have a you know, specific emoji in this layer. Um, and as we can see, we have one emoji, so we should have one true and the rest should be false, if that makes sense. Uh, and then the next layer, uh, the um, item corresponding, or the, um, what am I saying? Uh, it's, uh, oof. Not item, what am I looking for? The thing, the space. So this is like a, this is an array, right? So the, it's a, a one dimensional array because we're looking at just the first of them. Um, so one item, I guess, one of these Booleans should be true and it will correspond to the emoji that it is. Does that make sense? I don't know, y'all know one hot encoding. I don't need to like get into the uh, <laughs> uh, ins and outs of it and just gonna get rid of this. Uh, we can always go back and get this if we want. Um, soft max makes sense again, because we're doing multi-class. Uh, I do want to do a sequential. So there's the sequential model and then there's the, um, the other one. And I'm trying to remember what it is, but the other one is sort of like more, um, you have more space for specification and it's better if you're um, sort of a more advanced user. Uh, in the sequential model, you sort of like say what each layer is going to be. Uh, da, batch size of 28. Uh, activation layer. Okay, so her model actually only has one LSTM layer in it. Um, so we can start with that and then maybe get a little bit deeper do a couple more, a couple more layers uh, and see if that helps. I don't know. It might not. Again, 600, it is a 600 class problem, which is, you know, harder than a 27 class character class problem, which is what um, speech characters would be. Speech characters. Oh my God. The English alphabet, <laughs> which is what the English alphabet would be, um, not including things like um, punctuation. Okay. Uh, optimizer root mean square, that makes sense to me. Categorical cross entropy, that also makes sense to me. Uh, and we could we could tweak all of these if we wanted to. Um, and here's our little, little peeking in and looping functions. And, all right. File path. So we're gonna save out the weights, I think. Uh, and I know that there was just an update to the Keras library and wow, I hope we don't get a weird error when we run this. Okay, okay, we got a weird error. Oh, name user is not defined. Um, where do we have user? Escape F, looking for a user, aha, emojis. Oh, was it emojis or emoji? I think it was emojis. Emojis, okay. Uh, well, that error was easy to fix. <sighs> okay, I'm a little bit nervous. All right, epoch one of 15. I can't scroll, so I can't show you guys what's happening. Yeah, that looks, <laughs> this looks like about what I was expecting to see. A lot of repetition. Uh, oh, oh no, that's too much. Okay, the temperature is too low there. Um, oh wait, no, so the spaces would indicate that this is a new string, basically. This person is embarrassed by strong waves. Uh, interesting. All right, all right. And so, oh, we actually see the US, 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 C? What? Is there a flag that's just the letter C? All right. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going. 
Uh, so that's an emoji string that you could you could produce. All right. Um, so this is the sort of thing I was expecting to see, just like a lot of the same emoji over and over and over and over again. Uh, and yeah, we do get a lot of that. I mean, this looks like, you know, this looks like something somebody would leave in a YouTube comment. Uh, and this is uh, trained on YouTube and Twitter data, by the way. Uh, but by the time we get here, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the US flag and the Statue of Liberty. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, here again, US flag, Statue of Liberty. Uh, it looks like there's not a lot of skin tone color change. We've got this one. I can't tell if these are the same or not. <gasps> so close. <laughs> That's almost something people say. Um, so we should be getting the um, say no evil monkey in here at some point. Um, oh, yep, that's something people would say uh, on the on the internet. Uh, this is one string. Is there space in here? Okay, so this is all one string. I don't know about this one. This doesn't seem very well formed to me. Um, Pray hands, US flag, sparkly star, hear no evil, guitar thumbs up, information desk lady. Uh, this one looks pretty good to me. So SOS, broken heart, SOS. Uh, black princess, kissy lips, kissy lips. I like that one, that was pretty good. Okay, I'm fairly pleased with this. Uh, and again, very much something somebody would put on YouTube. This is just like, 40 poop emojis in a row. Um, okay, so I actually want to do some evaluation. Um, so this looks pretty good to me, uh, but I think we could do, you know, slightly so I think we can do something better with evaluation than looks pretty good to me. Um, I feel like we could also... Uh, I want to see if we can have... So here the, the space is sort of like the end of the sequence, but I, I would like also to be able to actually end the sequence. Um, so let's see, LSTM Keras end of sequence. Repeat until we generate the end of sequence character. So I think we can probably, uh, to that, what is the end of sequence character? And okay, um, so what I want instead of you know just generating a bunch of emoji strings like this person who just hates koalas, I guess? I guess that's what's going on there. Um, I want to be able to generate just a single string and then finish it. Um, so I want to be able to say, here's one emoji, um, how are you going to finish this sequence? And then once it's at the end of the sequence, it stops. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how to do that, so let's find out, huh? Same process can be used to train a sequence to sequence network without teacher forcing, re injecting the decoder's predictions into the decoder. Uh, we don't. So, this is an encoder decoder model, and we don't need this. Uh, 10 minute introductions, guru layer instead of an LSTM, uh, word level model. Teacher force training. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. Sequences with different number of time steps. That's what we're doing. So each of the each emoji would be a single time step. All right. You can, but you'd have to pad the shorter sequences with zeros since all inputs to Keras models must be tensors. Uh, another solution would be to feed sequences into your model one sequence at a time, batch size equals one, then the difference in sequence lengths would be irrelevant. 
So after padding, how the library knows to ignore the padded values and not use them for training. Okay, uh, so let's try this batch size equals one. Uh, and let's redo our tensor a bit. Uh, and retrain. And because we're using a GPU, uh, this is fairly quick to retrain, so we can afford to, to experiment a little bit more. Uh, so our batch size here is going to be 1 instead of 128. And um, it's the sentences that we're doing here. So I'm just going to say that I'm just going to add a uh, row in here that sentences equals uh, what square brackets is that uh, it's not a dictionary can I, can I actually actually can I just do this Meh. all right Index two is out of bounds. <laughs> Input shape is max line characters. Okay, so we have here um, Okay, let's comment this out. Uh, recreate our sentences, recreate our X and Y. So the structure of X I think we just did this and um, head doesn't work for matrices. We just did this and head doesn't work for matrices. Um, so it's a NumPy array. Uh, and this is a three-dimensional tensor, which is the length of sentences uh, times the max length, so the longest sentence, when our, which in our case would be two, because we said that earlier, uh, by the length of characters. Let's try actually, let's just try running it with uh, batch length once without, oh wait, uh, that's still going to throw an error. Let's try running it with batch length one once and see how that works. Not great is the answer. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of hang. Um, It just doesn't want to print out a bunch of stuff, which is what it's doing. So we're having a lot of spaces. So this means that on each training pass, we're just looking at one sample each time. Uh, it's thinking. but we have passed it an entire tensor and it's just looking at each row once. So we are getting out outputs of length one because we're only looking at one at a time. So noted. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. Uh, so because we're only looking at one thing at a time. So remember earlier when I said that the um, skin tone modifiers count as a single character? So because we're just looking at one thing at a time, it has taken modifiers and put them on things what it shouldn't put them on. So here we have um, the water gun emoji um, with skin tone modifiers attached to it and multiple skin tone modifiers, which is not a thing that you can have 
Um, so this experiment was b bad. <laughs> uh, I guess I can just have it generate until it hits a space. And we're also having multiple spaces here. Like it's generating just like space is a reasonable sequence. Um, so that didn't work. That made it worse. <laughs> um, yeah. I think we can actually probably set our max length here. Um, but we do need to create characters. Where does that happen? Excuse me. Hmm. Sleepy, sleepy. I should probably move these so I'm not doing them the very last thing of the work week. Uh, cars. Um, so character shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, so this is just all of the characters that we have in our data set. So that should be the same. No changes there. Uh, and that's where we got the 649, which is the number of features that we have. And uh, so this is going through and chopping it up, and we don't want to do that. Um, so let's instead do the padding. Let's do that instead. Um, instead of doing one long string, because then we'll actually have um, the end of the uh, of the string, and it'll know about that. Hopefully, hopefully that's how that works. <laughs> hopefully, it thinks that new row in the tensor is end of the sequence. Um, so what we need to do i plus max length. So this is going through and it's making everything up to max length. Uh, and I think for what we need to do is um, we need to get the maximum length of a sequence. So we need to get the longest sequence in our, so get the length of the longest sequence, pad any shorter sequences with space. Uh, and then we're going to convert it into a space sparse matrix. That's what, that we still need to do. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're going to do some padding. Um, you know what? I bet you somebody has already done this. Here's padding. Oh, actually, here it is. Um, I don't know why it sent me to the model compilation part. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in padding. Pad sequences. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. There's a little, uh, there's a little function for it. Okay, so sequence.pads, sequences, uh, input, max length. So we still need to find out, I'm just gonna copy this. So we still need to find out what the max length is. So the padding is uh, fairly straightforward. I'm on top, max features, most common words. Um, so I still need to, uh, pandas get length of longest cell. That is exactly what I wanted. Oh. Uh, and I saw somebody had to time it, so... Oh, none of these have a huge performance improvement. Uh... Suggest you guys... All right. Excuse me. 
and I like to avoid lambdas when I can. Uh, I just think they're hard to follow. So emojis don't turn that length at max. And let's actually just do the just this to make sure that this works. Oop. Nah. Hmm. Yes. Well. Uh. Emoji dot emoji. Yeah. One twenty six. We had this in a column, didn't we? Oh, okay, yeah, we had length. I, I just could have laxed for the max and the length column. Oh well. Uh, so this is going to be our new max length. Oh, no space, no underscore. So this is our new max length. And then, uh, pad sequences. So this is going to be emojis equals sequence dot pad sequence emojis max length and then i'm just going to take a teensy pink of this uh check output and i'm just going to uh print emojis from the first 10. that didn't work uh, all right, let's go back to the sample code. Uh, was down from here, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at strain, do we know what sequence dot pad sequences? Do we know? Hmm. Oh, okay, it's from Keras Preprocessing. So let's import that. I'm gonna put it here because that's where we use it. Whoop. Uh and now let's see if this will work. Huh? It does not work because it expects a numpy array. Oh no, invalid literal for int with base 10. Angry emoji. Okay, well, it is at this point that we have run into, possibly run into encoding errors. So it's expecting an array and we are giving it, what are we giving it? Python check data type. I think it's D type. And 2017, so it's hopefully type. It's just type. All right. Um, so type emojis. Oh, it's a string. Okay. Okay. Oh, we don't want emojis. We want emoji dot emoji. It's a series. Okay, um, okay, well, this is good. We're getting, we're getting, uh, our whole string. So that's nice. Um, it, it does expect this to be a number. Um, Keras pad. I don't want to convert it into a number. All right, our sequence is this. Oh my goodness, excuse me. Oh. Pad sequence is the same length. Function transform list of num sample sequences, list of integers into a 2D unpy array, npy, numpy array of shape, number of samples, number of timestamps. Number of timestamps is either the max length argument if provided or the length of the longest sequence otherwise. Oh, we don't even need to provide it. All right, that's nice, except we don't have sequences. Uh, we have, as they say, a series. All right, uh, pad series Python. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my god, I didn't mean PD. I meant pad. That's what I meant. Ah, numpy.pad. Is this gonna pad it to a specific array? Is this series an array? Man, we're getting into the weeds here, huh? Uh, let's try it. Not how you spell pad. Missing pad width and mode. So does it pad it to a fixed width? Pad is the edge of each sentence. Or int is a shortcut for before equals after equals pad width for all axes. Oh, that's not what I want. Um, Okay, so it's adding two fours and then three sixes. Hello. Uh, two three the edge. I want to pad it to a length, not by a specified length. So that's going to be a problem. Mm. Uh, pad series Python pandas series python pad okay but i want to pad it to a specific minimum width of resulting string additional characters will be filled with spaces ah here we go okay so it's series.str.pad let me make this a little bit bigger for y'all series.str.pad width which would be our max length that we got earlier and then the side and we want it uh i think we probably actually want it to the right side not the left side and then fill character. Okay, series dot. So this is the series that I want to pad. So this dot. Oh, I'm turned on insert dot pad, and then we are padding it to our max length. Hmm. Oh, right, and we want it on the, oh, sorry, we want it on the right, not the left, so. Side e-holes. Right. Why would you default to padding on the left? Woof. Okay. <sighs> All right. I think we're Gucci. And then sentence is just going to equal emojis. And then this should run. It did not run. Here. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. Um, noted. Yeah. So. Length of sentences. The max length. The length of characters. Kaboolian. So that worked. Uh, length of sentences. So if we get rid of this and we look at x11, okay, alright, so we have an array of, that should be the same size as our emojis data set. Actually, what if we get rid of this? What if we get rid of casting it to a tuple? Okay. And what does Y look like? Okay. So Y is sentences by characters, zeros. Okay, so we've just created um, an empty tensor, three dimensional tensor, and an empty matrix. And then we. Okay, so this is why we're doing the one hot encoding. For I sentence and enumerate sentences. So. Can I do ahead of this? Uh, can I do a slice of this? 
No. Okay, so it's a numerate object. That's helpful. This is not something I've used before. Um, for T character in a numerate sentence. Should that be a numerate mm, characters? Oh, no, so this is filling in the rows and this is filling in the columns. X, I, T, character indices of character equals one. So this is filling in the three-dimensional tensor and then the two-dimensional tensor. Do we end up using them both? We need X and Y. Yeah, so X is sort of our input and then Y is our output. So this is the... So I think this is the um, zero through nth items in our time sequence. And this is the nth plus one or the final item in our time sequence. Or in each sentence, or it's the first item in each second sentence. Let me see. Next characters. Oh, I think it's this next characters that's showing us for a loop. All right, so where do we, where do we set that? Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's definitely what's throwing us for a loop. So next characters is going to be the last slice. So we want it to be the final character in each sequence. You're with me so far. So what we should actually do is get the last character of every row and then uh all right let's actually do that first pandas last character in every row so that's the output so this is what you, we are predicting and then we're getting output back on um Blah, 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 blah. for each subject string in the series columns sorry I keep saying rows we want yeah we want the last character of every row in a column and columns are series extract groups from the first match of a regular expression pattern okay that I can do um Reg X end of line. Receiving rational string at the end of the input string. Okay. So it's literally the single character that occurs before the end of the string. Uh, so. Uh, so it would be emoji dot emoji dot string dot extract and it's the single character uh, happens before the end of this thing uh, match exactly one character rejects Single digit, anything but a space, not space. All right. Oh. All right, that didn't work. <laughs> Pattern contains no capture groups. Uh, so I want to capture this. Uh, I'm not 
let's actually just do the first 10 and then also emoji dot emoji I'm gonna do the first 10 just to make sure that I'd done what I thought I'd done I think actually I should probably do this one in a different cell so I can look at them side by side all right, so the last character is the frowny face, last character is the frowny face, last character is the nerd face, last character is the clap hands, last character is the champagne glass. All right, all right, all right, all right. We are, we are making progress. Um, so this is last emoji. Oop. And we're gonna put it down here. Oop. All right, and then we want to remove those. We can't know about them. They're a secret. Um, so we actually want to, what's the opposite of a capture group? So I think what we want to do is, is it, is it bang? Not a number, okay. That, nope, <laughs> not that it's not. Uh, I think actually I can do, let's see, star, uh, match any number of any characters except for the last one. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. All right. Making moves. Uh, input emoji. And then we're going to take that. We should just be able to do that. Let's see. Does this work? It works. All right. Uh, except we're getting some blah 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 blah. Seven blah 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 blah. Okay, I don't care. Um, I think we're doing good. I think we are making progress. So now, here instead of next cares we mean last emoji key error noted it's happening here character indexes of the character okay 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 and character happens Okay. Where did she be? Cars? Nope, that didn't work. Hmm. Okay, so where are we getting this character thing? Where are we getting this character thing? Maybe that's our problem is we, we don't have it. Um, maybe this is the input emoji that we mean? Mm, no. Car indices, we get what is this and what's in it? Uh, it's a dictionary. Um, Neon Fuzz says, can't you just use a string slice instead of a regex? Yeah, I like regexes. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm that sort of person who's had just enough old school NLP education that I'm like, this looks readable to me, a human. Would I willingly code in Perl? Absolutely not. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, so next cars is what we are calling last emoji. So let's just call it next cars instead. Um, Okay, but we're getting the problem here with car index and car uh, and enumerate cells. Hmm. What is an enumerate object? Tell me about it. Understands me. Why doesn't it pull my eyes? Just do my examples. Okay, so the enumerate object has a tuple in it. Oh, it's an iterable, and the values are generated on demand. Enumerate is often used in loops slash list comprehension, so needing to generate fully fledged list and allocate memory temporary object very likely to be unused afterwards. Most people use IE in enumerate examples, so they don't even notice the generator aspect. And the memory CPU Excuse me. Um, I think I don't understand enumerate. Is that what's happening? Is that why we have problems here? Um, so this is the index. Why are we enumerating sentence? Oh, I see, I see. So we're going through the sentence. So here we're going through each sentence, and here we're going through each character in each sentence. Okay, so this should remain car. Hmm, okay. Uh... But it's not an integer. It should be that matches. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so the thing that is happening now is we are trying to slice this using, so it's expecting an integer and we are giving it emoji, which are not integers. <laughs> um, so we need a way to, it's also not splitting it apart into individual characters it looks like. So we have, hmm. Okay, so, okay, okay, so A, it's only printing two things, which is not ideal. Um, presumably it should be printing more than two things. Um, but that's not the big problem here. So... And then car indices is what? I know we just looked at this. So this is a dictionary. Okay. So this is the first row and this is the second row, I believe in our input. Take a look at this. Yeah, so this is the first row and this is the second row. Um, and it is Okay, so we don't have dictionaries whose key is just the row of the emoji and that's why we're getting this error. So at some point I have misunderstood the data structures that we're working for, working with, which is just 100% of the time that is my problem. Um, car 
indices. How do I get all the keys from the dictionary? Uh, Python dictionary keys. Yes, I want to to print them. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's take a look at the keys. And I think this should be sliceable, and I think we should be able to take the first like six. Uh, that doesn't work. Oh, you know what? I bet it's. But that's not in the global namespace. Yes, I see. Yeah, that would be invalid syntax. Dict keys object is not subscriptable. Okay, well, let's print some stuff out and see what it looks like. No, print it out. Okay, so what we have is a dictionary where the keys are single emoji and we are asking for multiple emoji at a time. So something is wrong. All right, something's up. Um, and I think, oh my God, it's 516. Uh, I think I'm gonna call that for today. Um, and this is going to give me an error when I try and print it later on. Uh, oh, actually, no. So I'm gonna leave myself a big old to do. To do, pass only a single character at a time. Actually, so I, what I was thinking was that this was going through and printing one character at a time. And it looks like it's not. It looks like it's somehow not splitting them up. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's up there. And also it looks like it's printing a bunch of the spaces that I used for padding and I don't actually care about this. Um, so that's not ideal. Hmm. Hot uh, encode our emoji with encoding properly. <laughs> All right, uh, and that's where we will pick up next time, next Friday. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a real good weekend. Hopefully, I don't know how fun this was to watch, but it's, I don't know, I feel like we're making progress. Um, we definitely generated some emoji strings. They were not exactly what I wanted, and we're getting there. Um, yeah, and next time we will yet again futz around with tensors. Uh. <laughs>